Okay, so my name is Vanessa and I've been really lucky enough to get asked to come along today, not only to talk about how proud I am to be English, but also how important sport is. I've got a really big wave at the back. Um, and how integral it is in my life and how it brings everybody together as a community. So I'm going to take you on a really quick whistle-stop tour of how I went from absolute novice to a gold medalist, if that's okay. Is that all right? Yes! Okay, so if we go back to about 2010, which feels like a bit of a lifetime ago, I went into um, one of our national treasures, the NHS, and I went into this program that kind of helps you redo your life with the condition that I've got. But one of the things they did was get you doing what was kind of like PE. So you'd go into the sports hall once a week and they'd literally set up sports so that no matter how you were, no matter what worked or what didn't, you could do something. So I had a go at badminton, I had a go, had a go at table tennis, and then eventually wheelchair basketball. Now, brilliant sport, but my body said no chance. And then I was looking for a walking group for my mum. And can everyone turn around and actually give her a wave? Because she's right over there, sitting down at the back, <laughs> having a little wave back, thank you. But I found on my council's website something called wheelchair racing. And I thought, oh God, no chance. Because I'm too old at the time. I thought I've never done sport. But they said, come and learn to push your own chair better. So you didn't have to go and do sport sport. So I thought, all right, I'll have a bit of that. Went along and within about six months, I was suddenly in a gym, like me, in a gym. Never knew it could happen. Um, and about six months later, I got asked, would I like to start coaching? And I thought, well, I don't know how to do that. But I did this really weird thing called a year of saying yes to everything. Oh. And it's amazing how much mischief you can get up to if you say yes. But it's also amazing what gets offered to you if you're open to just saying yes. So I started coaching. Suddenly I was doing public speaking. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I go to something called classification. So when you're an athlete with an impairment, you go along to a little panel and they have a look at how does your disability affect you in your sport. So I went along, did the process because I was saying yes, and a lovely man called Steve who lives up in Barnet, is a coach, came up to me and he was like, Ness, you thought about being a thrower? You're built for it. <laughs> you see, I <laughs> weren't sure if that was particularly sexy at the time. <laughs> I weren't sure. Now I know that it's obviously totally sexy. Um, but because I was saying yes, I went along to Lee Valley, if anyone knows it, went and met my coach, Alison, and she laughed. Because she said, well, I wouldn't have put it quite that way. I would have just said, you look a bit strong. I uh, had a couple sessions, went off, did life. About two years later, I get a tweet. And she said, when you're going to come back and try this, you'll be a natural. Notice she didn't say you're built for it. She just said you're natural. And I thought, I don't know, life, there's too much going on. I haven't got space. I wasn't doing the yes thing. And then I had a conversation with a friend and we were talking about women and bravery and how sometimes as women we can be the person who pushes everyone forward and then we don't necessarily get to do the same thing for ourselves. Very deep conversation over some sandwiches and then the internet weren't working at work. So I thought, well, fuck at this, I'm going home, um, but I'm going via Boots in Wood Green and I'm going to get myself some clear lipstick because that's what I used to do. And I get told at the number seven counter, please let me put some um, colour on your lips. They're really juicy. Not a bad compliment. Um, so I let the lady do it. I felt quite brave. So I went home and tweeted back the coach and said, when do you start? And she said, well, 
Same as when I met you. We'll see you next week. That was 2014 December. April 2015, first competition. I broke the floor, as you do in a shot put competition. Summer 2015, British champion. And I still am. I'm not bad, I know, I'm not bad, I'm not bad. Uh, then we get to uh, March 2016, and I do my first international competition. I think I came fourth or fifth in Dubai. June 2016, I get my first GB call up, and I get to go to the European Championships, and it is fourth place. Five weeks later, I find out I'm going to Rio Paralympics. And all I could do was laugh, because I thought I'd been punked. I thought, there's no way that I started last year and you're taking me to the Paralympics. This is mad. So I go. I think I finished fifth, not last. I'll take that. And then we get to the World Champs, finishing fifth. I'm like, all right, need to speed this up a bit now, Ness. And then last year, I get to the Europeans. So you remember I did that in 2016, and I got to come home with this. <laughs> she ain't half heavy, is what I will say. Um, so I'm now the European champion in shot put in the F34 category. Um, and I'm the first British woman, English woman, to hold it. So I'm now in the record book forever. Thank you. But part of this is actually down to you guys. So did you know every time you buy a lottery ticket, some of it goes towards sport. And it goes towards helping people like me train full time to try and bring shiny things like this home to you guys. But basically the moral of my story is Say yes, if it's legal, just putting that out there. Sometimes trust in the people who are around you because they can see something in you that you can't see in yourself. And thirdly, have a go. Just have a go because sometimes it's the best thing that you could ever do. And here we are.